Okay, so whenever you guys are ready, can you <laughs> explain what you've put together? Yeah, so this is essentially a nuclear fission simulator, roughly modeled after a specific type of reactor, uh, infamous for the Chernobyl disaster, which is called the RBMK. Um, so really basics, you can see the top left is kind of our nuclear fission reactor. Uh, very, very basic level, you'll see neutrons colliding with the bright green cells, which represent the uranium uh, nucleus. Okay. Um, you'll also see black cells are the xenon, which is a form of moderator. It essentially absorbs any moving neutrons. Any emitted neutrons, so at, uh, a nuclear fission reaction will split off into three neutrons. It's kind of hard to see. You gotta pick yeah, one and be if, lucky. If we watch one though, we can see, <laughs> see that. that. Okay. Yes, yeah. yes. Sorry, Break I may have covered that, that move very fast. Yeah. Yes. So emitted neutrons are, have a lot of energy. They're called fast neutrons, which actually they're moving too fast to uh, react effectively with any of the cells. So they first need to be moderated to basically lose some energy and slow down. That can be done either in two ways. Water is what you're seeing in the background, essentially, uh, represented by the, by the blue cells. Uh -huh. um, get a little cra uh, crazy right now, but... So water takes away energy from the neutrons. In so doing, it'll heat up um, as well. And so the water is in a cooling loop, so it'll eventually cool down. And the state of the water is represented by this gradient from blue to cyan. Okay. The cyan is showing steam. Once it's steam, it loses all moderation capability and it doesn't take away any energy at all. The other form is of graphite rods. So fast neutrons will collide and bounce off and become a slow neutron, a thermal neutron, which can then react with uranium. Um, finally, we do have these green rods, which are the control rods, which just absorb any neutrons um, that are moving whatsoever. And it's kind of like the main moderator. Um, see our legend of the different things you can see on the uh -huh. simulation and then you want to talk some more about the graph yes uh, for the graph there are basically two graphs so the left one there are three colors line the white line is the neutrons that lie uh, currently inside the simulator it will decide the, uh, it will display the neutron number okay. and for the green for the green line it is the position or the location of the control row and for the for the blue line uh, it's a special stuff like basically it's, it is a, a line which shows that how much energy the water has still absorbed and the right part is uh, is the graph to show the power output of the nuclear simulator now uh, the output is decided by how many collisions happen in the past one second okay yeah. and so and do i understand or am i inferring correctly that the fact that the we're observing the position of the control mod rods move. Does that suggest that there's some sort of like control habit, yes, like automated yeah. mode? Yeah, right, right, now. That right comes now. in that kind of ties into the various modes and like user uh -huh. controls that we have with the, the control box over here. So you can see right in the center, uh, red auto. Uh, this is like our, our autonomous mode uh, with a, a set point that we've gone through tuning lots of parameters that this is a, a generally stable state. Uh -huh. uh, and you see like at least over the course of the video, it's been oscillating up and down, but it kind of tends to return um, fairly quickly. Uh -huh. um, if it goes into if it goes into the spiral or anything, and essentially we give it a target number of nuclei that we want to keep on screen, and when it's above, it will try to control more. If it's below, it goes away to try to get yeah. the reaction. And we can okay. change that number by uh, that's generally like that target is kind of the approximate amount of power that you'd be generating with the system. So you can uh, like use this to like one of these encoders to now set this target much higher, and then now you'll you'll tend to see that the control rods will likely re retract. Um, the the water uh, like and because of that there's much more energy in the yeah. system now uh, you'll see much more steam over time just because you're you know reducing less energy like over time uh -huh. um, so it'll end up ballooning fairly quickly uh, we can also switch from <laughs> autonomous mode to uh, manual mode and now here we can manually override all of the control like control the control rods here you can see them going down this should dampen things fairly quickly um, you can also change uh, cooling. So this with this encoder, this changes the, I guess, flow rate, which is, I guess, the model in how quickly water goes from steam back to, to cool uh -huh. uh, cool water again. Um, another, uh, a, a fun one, which this is a, I guess another control parameter that tends to um, kind of break the, the laws of physics a bit. <laughs> um, actually, let's just reset. That's probably easiest to, to auto. Oh yeah, back to auto. Um, Wait, yeah. before yeah, before um, we go on to the more fun stuff, just yeah. a quick note about water flow is actually, it's kind of, 
a little bit deceptive because water, as you as Tyler mentioned, once it boils away, it loses all moderation capability. Uh -huh. So they're kind of like it's like like balancing of parameters. If we increase the cooling, what we find with that is that obviously to get the same target number, the control rods are going to be on average like more away. Uh -huh. So actually, increasing water flow can kind of have the adverse reaction of getting it to flow up much easier because once the water is gone, it loses all moderation. Sure. And the control rods are more out. Versus if the water flow was less, then the con we would be more dependent on the control rod position to moderate. And so it's, and you can see that so right now. So it's running away right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So even though we should be in auto mode. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, I, oh, we also have, um, to make the simulation, sometimes it's a little bit slow or like, it's hard to tell. Yeah. So you can, we have a simulation a speed button that you can press and then now uh, things are running at half speed. Um, oh, okay. So you're like when things get quite chaotic, you can keep track a little bit easier. Plus again, you return back to normal speed. Um, another option, that, uh, another uh, knob that we've changed, this is one of the more fun ones, is we've labeled volatility, uh -huh. uh, which is just is, uh, changes the number of like neutrons that decay every time a uranium uh, you know, decays from uranium to uh, the, the lower elements um, when it's ejecting more neutrons. So normally that is two because of physics, uh -huh. uh, but we've decided to change that because it's a simulation that can be fun. Um, that you can change this to maybe, let's say, 10, and oh, things will neat. start getting very hectic very fast. So now it emits 10 neutrons yeah. instead of 2 uh, neutrons. Okay. Yeah. Well, actually 11, um, but that's or like a new one submitted, because there's the okay. one neutron going in, so normally you, you'll see uh, like <laughs> okay. 3 coming out. So things are getting lots of steam. Uh, you can turn this number back down to, let's say, 2. Uh, and we also have this scram button that like when things are chaotic, uh, you can press, and it automatically brings the control rods down. And uh, it was already on its way down. It wasn't. It wasn't so yeah. fast. Um, but it brings them all the way down, and yeah, it brings them all the way down, and, and is supposed to stabilize things when things go. How good. neat. Um, yeah, I guess we can go back to go back to auto, and we bring our target back to a normal number, and you can see the control rods are going back up. Um, neutrons will slowly spawn in, and uh, maybe with some time, let's actually turn the cooling factor down as well. Yeah, just to keep the reaction levels. going, any of the non-fissile nuclei have some random chance of just emitting spontaneous decaying neutrons. So that's okay. part of the simulation as well. Yeah. Uh, which is what kind of gets the reaction going, even if there's zero left. Yeah. In the in the graph on the on the right, plotting like power over time, uh, we did scale this uh, intentionally so that when things when it would approximately reach meltdown and cause huge problems, it literally goes outside the bounds. Yeah, sure. Uh, and showing like, okay, when once you reach beyond this level, things are really quite bad. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> we did not we did not reset that because like every time it's out of the boundary which means it's possible on meltdown. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Like normally it should not be there. If it is be there it means you are doing something too aggressive in your simulation. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Which I you see I saw quite a big spike when you break physics and, and make uh -huh. uh, make ten neutrons uh, decay every time. Um yeah. And you can just see it uh, it kind of just keeps going forever. It's not really like a some of the other projects are like more gamified and like there's not really like a win state, I guess. No, Maybe it's simulation. Just, yeah. that, that's really, really nice. Yeah. Your control board is really nice as well. So you've got one, two, three, four, five rotary encoders. Mm -hmm. um, how many? Four buttons. Yeah. And then a nice big switch here. Yeah. Yeah. Just very tactile. Cool. Very clunky. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. Really, really impressive. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you very much. Audio. Oh, and then, of course, you've got yeah. your guy. Which I guess we could, we could send this really, really high just to really hear it go crazy on the on the Geiger kind of sound. And then, under what conditions does a sound happen? Uh, every collision, I believe. Okay. With just uranium splitting. Yeah. Every uranium splitting. Okay. Yeah. And now things are. <laughs> this is this is bad. Fully <laughs> bad situation. Yeah, it kind of. This is this is. I guess the. I think the most we stress tested. Uh, okay. Before. And things are going. We're, we're losing quite many frames now. Uh, to handle, awesome. Awesome. It's a good, scram it. Time for scram. Yeah. Right? So you can see how how quickly it responds. Control rods are dropping. Yeah. Fairly fast, and now it's it's kind of equalizing pretty quickly. Which this is. I mean. I, if there's that much energy in the system, things are, things are bad. It, that would have, that would an explosion uh -huh. at that point. Uh -huh. Can't quite bring them down in that case, realistically, but yeah. Really cool. Awesome. Thank you. That's a really, really cool project.